ब्रह्मचरिव्रतीदंडी सर्वेदातपंडित श्रीमद्विवेकोगी मं प्रचोदयद वी आर ऑलमोस्ट कमिंग टू दी लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ अवर डिस्कशन ऑन कर्मयोग इट इज नॉट बिकॉज कर्मयोग इज ओवर इट इज सच ए वास्ट एक्टिव फील्ड वी आर ओनली पिकिंग अप सम पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम विच स्वाम जी हैज स्कैटर्ड थ्रू हिस्स लेक्चर्स ऑन कर्मयोग समटाइम्स he picks up from krishna bhagavad gita something sometimes from the life of his own master sometimes from jesus and buddha so like that he gives us glimpses of the beauty of karma yoga so before we enter into the next step that is bhakti yoga we should be able to fix in our mind certain very very important points also so a couple of lectures probably we may have to devote to that uh, one thing quoting gita swami ji says shri krishna tells arjuna you know when he after being born a kshatriya prince he wants to leave everything and goes go to forest for meditation and tapas he wants him that is not possible for you because your swadharma is that of a kshatriya prince so leaving this swadharma you can't go anywhere else don't think you will be at peace there paradharmo bhayavah it will create a lot of tension lot of unwanted troubles for us so be true to yourself if i am born a mathematician like our great srinivasa ramanujam so we have to follow that he went as a clerk somewhere but his total dedication to that sudharma sudharma was his inclination to do serve mathematics finally made him a world renowned mathematician sometimes we make a mistake of this when dealing with our children we never bother to ask them what exactly is their inclination whether they want to be a musician we want them to be a doctor they want to be a cricketer we want them to be an engineer so conflicts arise in the minds we create the conflicts in their minds also so we must have some idea of swadharma swadharma doesn't mean into which society we are born or we into into varnashrama not that what is our natural inclination put where we will shine forth we can't bring a plant from all the way from the arctic and try to grow here in our sometimes it will go to uti and kodaikanal and bring very nice cuttings and all that thinking those roses and other flowers we can plant here but then they fail because this temperature is not suited for them so similarly we have to find out our own inclination whether i would like to do work and move forward whether i would like to go through the path of bhakti yoga we have to take the decision ourselves and parents must be understanding enough to help the children to choose their own path so some jee stresses that he says every man should take up his own ideal and endeavor to accomplish it because that is a surer way of progress than taking up other men's ideals which he can never hope to accomplish we cannot take a child and send him for the olympics to walk 20 kilometers isn't it 
So in that way we have to be little careful. Sri Krishna is explaining this beautifully in the Bhagavad Gita and most of us are familiar with Sri Krishna's advice to Arjuna. So dharme nithanam shaya paradharmo bhayavaha. Then another point, what do we gain by this non-attachment etc. etc. Non-attachment leads to fearlessness. No, all the fear comes to us when we are asking something from the other. Only to selfishness comes fear. If there is no selfishness, you are not bothered. Whether anybody is going to offer you something, a place, no, I need nothing in my life. Then there is no fear from anybody. Only when you take something from somebody, then along with that you are taking a little fear also. He who has nothing to desire for himself, whom does he fear and what can frighten him? What fear has death for him? What fear has evil for him? So if we are Advaitist, we must think from this moment that our old self is dead and gone. The old Mr. and Mrs. Miss so and so are gone. They are mere superstitions and what remains the ever pure, ever strong, the almighty, the all-knowing, which alone remains for us and them all fear vanishes from us. Who can injure us, the omnipresent? So, so it is part of the expansion of our mind. When our mind, see, a pot of water kept in a vessel will have to be in the vessel. The pot, if it is destroyed, the water will flow away. But if it is in the form of water vapor, what it has to fear? The whole universe is his, isn't it? In the same way, when we identify with the small self, there is fear. When we identify with the universal self, there is no fear. So, more and more we should learn to be unselfish. Unselfish means we are identifying with the big self, our divine self. So all the weaknesses will disappear from our mind. So that is another great lesson non-attachment gives us. The non-attached has no fear at all. Then another thing which from Bhagavad Gita we are trying in the last two, three classes to bring our thoughts also nearer to Bhagavad Gita. So, there is a very famous quotation from Bhagavad Gita everybody uses, Yoga Karma Sukhaushala. We should work through yoga in such concentration in action, there is no consciousness of the lower ego present. That is, we forget. When we say Yoga Karma Sukhaushala, we think that it is just efficiency. It is not mere efficiency. Yoga Karma Sukhaushala means that person who has a greater knowledge of the Self, his position in the universe, his duty to the cosmic whole, such a person when he works, then only his work becomes a wholesome work. So Swamiji says, in such concentration in action, there is no consciousness of the lower ego. We are all identified with our lower ego, you see. So that is why we get stuck up here and there. When we identify with the universal ego, oh, I have not planned it. Doesn't matter, there is somebody else who is planning for you. You surrender to that. So when we identify with that, so Swamiji, when he used to talk to the Western people, he used to say, you people do not understand this. What comes out of this surrender to the total self? So yoga karma sukhavishana means when you totally surrender to the higher, from somewhere, some efficiency, some comprehensive understanding, some intuitive knowledge of what to do, how to do, when to do, all that enters into you. That is the beauty of Karma Yoga. If you are doing just monotonous work, we will do monotonous mechanical work. But the minute you turn to Karma Yoga and try to imbibe some of the strength of Karma Yoga, then we will find that some efficiency comes into our hands, into our minds, into our work. So that is another important thing which we have to remember when 
we think of krishna's words yoga karma sukausha